So what are enteric viruses? So this is actually a general term referring to viruses that reproduce in the GI tract. So these viruses are not necessarily related genetically, but they all have the ability to replicate in the epithelial cells that line the GI tract. So let's think about what that means in terms of transmission. So things in the GI tract travel from top to bottom. So that means that with an enteric virus, you get infected through your mouth and then shed the virus to infect someone else through your feces. So as a result, we say it has fecal oral transmission. And that means the virus has to get from one person's feces to another person's oral cavity. And this usually happens via direct contact or food or via fomites, so objects that the virus can sit on. So almost all enteric viruses can transmit by the fecal oral route. And then some of them can also transmit in other ways. So for example, an enteric virus that replicates in the mouth or an enteric virus that perhaps can also replicate in the respiratory tract in addition to the GI tract, that might be able to be spread by respiratory droplets. Now something else to notice is that since these viruses come in through the top and then go out through the bottom, it stands to reason that they have to pass through the stomach. And that means they have to be resistant to stomach acid. How do they do that? Well, for one thing, many, although not all of them, many don't have envelopes, and that actually makes them less susceptible to the acid. Okay, so if enteric viruses infect the GI tract, then what kinds of symptoms do they cause? Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, always? No. So just because they replicate there does not necessarily mean that they cause those symptoms. Sometimes they can replicate quietly and cause no GI symptoms. And in that case, you might think, who cares? Why do we care about this virus if it doesn't cause any symptoms? Well, you might care because some viruses can replicate quietly in the GI tract, but then spread to infect a different kind of cell in the body where they do cause symptoms. And we'll see some very important examples of that. So what are the enteric viruses? Well, a lot of them fall into a genus called enterovirus, which is in the Picorna virus family. And one very famous virus in the enterovirus group is poliovirus. And it's now almost gone, but it was a very, very serious cause of paralysis. And you might be thinking to yourself, okay, so it causes paralysis. Why are we talking about it in enteric viruses? Well, poliovirus does replicate in the GI tract, but then it can get out of the GI symptom and cause paralysis by infecting neurons. So it's actually a great example of what we just talked about. The fact that enteric viruses can be silent in the GI system, but then cause non-GI symptoms. And in fact, most poliovirus infections stay in the GI tract and never leave and never cause paralysis. So there's polio, and then there are a lot of other enteroviruses, which we often call the non-polio enteroviruses. And this group includes echoviruses, Coxsackie virus, and there are many, many types of each of these. All of them replicate in the GI tract, but like poliovirus, they can also do a lot of other things, infecting different cells in your body. And they don't have to give you any GI symptoms. Now, two other enteric viruses that we'll talk about are not in the enterovirus genus and not even in the picornavirus family. And these are rotavirus and norovirus. And they're not related to each other either, but they're both similar in that they're both what we call two bucket diseases, which means they cause plenty of diarrhea and plenty of vomiting. So unlike enteroviruses, these enteric viruses really affect the GI tract in terms of their symptoms. They put you on the toilet and you don't know which way to turn. 